This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Special thanks to Catapult Sports for providing the Coaches Lounge where we sat down and talked with coaches at AFCA. Today's episode is with John Pennington, who is the head football coach at West Virginia State. He enters his seventh season there and was named the head coach in spring of 2017 and promptly proceeded to lead the program to its first winning season in a decade. Today we talk about Small college recruiting, dealing with the transfer portal, developing culture, using NIL as an education opportunity, and more. Be sure to check out the links in the show notes to our two previous episodes with Coach Pennington, as well as to his RPO course. We're live here from AFCA. I'm sitting down with the head football coach at West Virginia State, John Pennington. John's been on the podcast before, but it's great to have you back here and, and sit down in person and talk. Yeah, it's, it's great to see you, first of all. I love the podcast, uh, shameless plug. I listen to it all the time, like if I'm uh, working around the house. So it's just awesome to hear other coaches' thoughts and insights. Yeah, well, and, and you know, it's great to have you back and get your insight on things. And today, we're focused on recruiting. You and I were talking about you know, recruiting at the small college level. And obviously, <laughs> you know, in the last couple years here, the dynamics of recruiting have changed with uh, the portal, which just went crazy this year, and, you know, all the other things we have to deal with. What doesn't change is, uh, as a small college coach, you know, your your staff, your budget, etc. Yeah. So we got to find ways to be efficient with that. But we'd like to get your thoughts just on, on the changes here and how you keep up with it at West Virginia State. Yeah, you know, the transfer portal is a big one. And we, there were always guys transferring. You yeah. know, that's existed for a long time. But it's really, for us, it just kind of makes it easier. But it wasn't, uh, it took a lot of time and effort to kind of sort through all the names because you, you don't get a lot of information from the right. portal. So uh, we got, you know, the catapult database and that has just cut so much time out of our day because we can we can filter through and because you don't want to waste your time looking at uh, a Michigan five-star guy that's not going to ever come to West Virginia State. Right. But you could go through there and see maybe he was a walk-on or maybe like it's a high school that you recruit a state you know like so what we try to do is go through and find maybe somewhere where we have a connection and that way we're not wait, we're not spinning our wheels we're not wasting the kids right. time so it's just a great time saver and it's allowed us to be much more efficient with right. you know with things well and at the d2 level um you know, you, you want to get some of those transfers we just like we would at d3 the, yeah. the guys who bounce back uh but with the portal becoming so big in this you know you look at it it actually increased our workload because yeah. we still have all of our high school guys to sort through and and now we've got all these these potential transfers we could bring in so yeah you you need some tools just well, because the portal came along i don't think your school gave you any more money for recruiting <laughs> yeah. or yeah. any more coaches to go out and recruit that's true and you know there, there's a there's always a good side of something i'm always trying to find the sure. silver lining and it, it, there's a couple of good things where you know a player you know, a high school player, if he's not doing the right things in the weight room, I've had high school coaches tell me this, you know, they got to check all the boxes because if not, we can find guys in the portal or we can find, you know, uh, so there's there's some, and even our own players, like, we have to do a good job as coaches creating a good culture and, uh, you know, creating a great place where our players can thrive and do, you know, if you're a coach that's not doing some of those, you know, cultural things that, that are extremely important, I think that a lot of guys leave programs like that. So sure. for guys like me that are big on culture and retention, uh, I think it can be an advantage for us because we can retain some guys that might jump in the portal because, you know, for whatever reason. Well, you know, recruiting never ends now. With the guys you bring in, you still have to think about what's going to keep them there. Always. Yeah. That's nothing new. Um, it's just, you know, the, the portal certainly has made it easier. Guys, even to make excuses and say, I didn't like this, so I'm gone. Right. Um, 
So you constantly have to be working on the culture, and I know that's a, a big thing for you. Uh, just looking, I guess, at some of the dynamics that have changed, have, have you focused on anything a little bit differently than you have in the past? Absolutely. I mean, I, I have, I've been nonstop transfer portal, calling those guys, talking to those guys. Uh, I used to have a bigger area high school-wise, and now, and even as the head coach, but now I just do the local area and spend, you know, 90% of my recruiting effort now on college. And then in D2, you know, signing day is February 1st. So our, our stuff is, I think the high school guys are getting antsy because college coaches like myself are still trying to finish up the portal season. And that finishes up like now, you know, right. so like school starts for us Thursday or they report Thursday. So like, you know, after this weekend, that, that's going to kind of go away and then the high school is going to ramp up. So I think there's a now a portal season, you know, and I, I, I kind of charged my assistants to make sure they were on top of these uh, high school kids and let me make the, you know, let's find the portal guys we like. I'll try to spend my time on that, mm -hmm. you know, because those are the guys that are going to be immediate impact type guys. So we have had to change a lot. We've never had, you know, a database, but we needed one. You know, cat this catapult thing was awesome. And I mean, uh, I never even thought about it, you know, getting one, but we had to. Yeah. With, you know, when you bring new guys in now and, and I, you know, for you, maybe it hasn't changed much in the, the amount of numbers. But, um, you know, every team's new every year anyway as far right. as the culture. But certainly it, it, it can affect the dynamics of the team. Um, you might have that guy who ended the season and thought, it's my turn, and yeah. maybe it's not anymore. And you still have to continue to develop. And you don't want to lose that guy either. He's right. important in your program. Uh, how, do, how do you handle that as a culture builder? You know, I think just your actions. Like, if, as long as we continue, development's been our key word in our entire program since I've been there. So. As long as we continue to, to focus on developing our players, whether they've been there, an 18-year-old freshman been there for five years, only gonna be there for one semester, it doesn't matter. You're still building a relationship, you're still trying to develop young men. I think when they see that, you know, that, that kind of helps. It's like, it's, you know, they see it in your actions, right? You're really trying to develop them, you care about them. Of course, all coaches care about their players, but we're investing time and effort into teaching them how to be better people. And I think that that goes a long way. Yeah. Well, in looking at the, the tools and getting back into you know, the, the technology, it certainly can make us more efficient as coaches. And, and as you said, the, the Catapult portal software has been good for you. What things do you like best about it? What are the features that really, for you, make a difference? Uh, I mean, I, and I, this is not because of anything with Catapult. I like the guy. David Armstrong's been awesome. <laughs> like, the guy that works with us is yeah. so easily accessible. Um, so that would number one. I'm a I'm from West Virginia. We're a small community. Like I like people. So you know when I someone I feel comfortable with, I love that because I can just text him and be like, hey, I'm having a problem. He'll call me immediately and, and get on a Zoom and fix it. Uh, but they, you know, it's just it's got so much information. You know, like I said, just to save you time. Like you, you might. You probably don't want another a walk on from a. You're not going to offer a big scholarship to a walk on from a Division two school. So you can see in the portal like was he on scholarship at whatever school? How many snaps did he play? And maybe it was all special teams, you know, and didn't play any defense or any offense. So you can really dive into that young man and see if it's going to be a fit and if it's going to be you know something that's worth your time. So yeah. uh, I mean, just the the overall database is very easy to utilize right. and thin out. You know, instead of recruiting. However many are in there now, I don't know, 5,000. You know, you can get it down, you can narrow it down to 20. Right. And now you've got 20 kids that you probably have a connection to some way, somehow. And then, and boom, you know, you follow them on Twitter and, and you're on a phone call probably that night. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's been years since we talked, but, um, you know, we, we all continue to develop and grow as coaches. Uh, you know, looking back, I guess it's been about five years, over the last five years for you. What have, what do you feel are the, the biggest ways you've developed as a coach? And, and really, what did you do to, to develop yourself that way? Yeah, you know, I, uh, I think as long as you're intentional about just growing and developing, like that you know, like, okay, this loss, there's something I need to learn here. You know, there's really nothing that can prepare you for having to suspend a player for something at night before a game or kids getting kicked out of school or someone's mother or father dying. Like, you almost just have to go through it and grow through it. And, and I think the biggest thing for me is just learning to keep things a little simpler, you know, like especially schematically, but even with a, a player, you know, like it's, it's not always that difficult. Like just listen to them, talk to them, spend time with them. Like it's, you don't have to memorize everyone's birthday, you know, like just, just spend your time with them, getting to know them, you know, and I think I've done a, I've gotten a lot better about not 
the consequences, the outcomes. Right. I, you know, I'm still like when you're a head coach and you lose a game, it, it's like a piece of your heart goes away. Like it's, it, it really crushes you. And I've uh, I've gotten better at kind of letting go of the results a little bit and just focusing on my craft. And if I do a good enough job, you know, the results will take care of themselves. Yeah, but that, it's easier said than done. Well, it is. I mean, I, that is probably the toughest thing for me. Is is uh, it didn't matter what level or or how big the game, but uh, a loss really affected me deeply yeah. the rest of the weekend. I mean, for me, it was um, the the thing that just rejuvenated anything it was getting back on the on the practice field yeah. as soon as you could, uh, and we get rid of that feeling. Yep. But there was all those feelings in between that, yeah, you gotta let go. But you mentioned simplifying, and uh, you know it's it's easy now to get caught up in all the. The great concepts that are out there. Yeah. Um, we we see them now more than ever. It's easy, you know, a million Zoom clinics that have been done in the last two years, right? Right. Um, so it's easy to learn this stuff. But for you, uh, how did you go through that process? How do you simplify what you're doing to make sure that uh, you still have all the tools you need to have an attack, but at the same time, um, you got stuff that's really going to optimize the players that you have. I think you have to reverse engineer it, right? Like, you have to start with, like, what do we want here? You know, what are we trying? To, what's the ultimate objective? Obviously, scoring points or whatever, but more so, like, okay, we want to be fast, we want to be explosive, or we want to control the clock. Like, what do you – what? And then you kind of reverse engineer from there, like, what's the easiest way to get to that point? You know, like, I was talking to our DC on the way down here about, you know, pass concepts. I'm like, honestly, it's really just throw it to your best guy. Like, how can we get him one-on-one -on -one and throw it to that guy? Like, that's that's ultimately what we're trying to do. Get your best players the ball. And, and it's it's more than that. Sure. But at the same time, if it's third and six, let's, how do we get so-and-so the ball and create a matchup, a one-on-one, -on -one, or create something that forces the defense to – create a, a favorable matchup somewhere else. You know, that's ultimately what you have to do, whether it's a formation or a player. Uh, and so I think we've kind of gotten a lot better at cutting out verbiage and just giving one signal. Because we went, uh, we go really fast tempo now. Yeah. And so that forced me, you know, because I'll overthink for days you know, about everything. Uh, and so, the, but the tempo, you can't go fast if you have six motions and eight calls. And right. so it has to be built in, but um, you know, the, it's funny because there's just nothing is really that different, but there's so everything is kind right. of different. Recruiting's right. different because the portal, but it's the same. You're building relationships. The NIL stuff is different, but it's like, well, it's just things that players are into, and you gotta yeah. be up with that stuff. Yeah. They need I, it. They 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 certainly do. I know. I thought it got my attention. I saw it during the season, or maybe before the season. Uh, West Virginia State in in the transfer portal, and. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, in NIL. Yeah. And you guys having some people helping them with yeah. NIL deals. Like, you don't hear that. My son's a Division II baseball player. Those guys don't have NIL deals. But now, I mean, what gives your school an advantage? That certainly, if I'm a D2 player, uh, that's got my attention. So talk to me a little bit about that and just how you guys have approached it. Well, one of my, uh, two of my best friends uh, are, they have a law firm and they were talking to me about doing NIL stuff. and I. I just didn't think, because we're, you know, we're a small school, that we would have anyone. Like no one's gonna pay our, you know, want to sponsor with our players. And uh, they, they, they run a, um, a company called B Sports, and they just encourage guys to be themselves if they have a following on social media, stuff like that. And they were just telling me like they don't have to be the star player; it just be, might be someone that someone wants to invest in to, you know, to advertise. And so we, I start, we kind of started looking at it a little differently. And it, it, we just presented it to our players, like, you know, if, if you, because, you know, they're marketing themselves on social media, that's kind of the new world. You have to brand yourself. And I think it's a great educational tool. And sure. so that's why I'm doing it. it I want to be in the front of this thing and, like, you, because they're going to need it for their future jobs. I mean, my kids are going to probably have to have their own website and their own, you know, so, like, why not? It, it, to me, it's win-win. They get, you know, they get some money, you know, to help them spending money. It's not a lot, but they get, I mean, if, when I was in college, you gave me a, you know, a pack of ramen noodles. I was pumped, you know. <laughs> so, like, it, it doesn't take a lot to really help that young man have a great experience. Right. And, and then he's got to market himself. He can't be on social media, you know, putting bad stuff out there, being, too, you know, too argumentative. Like, 
it kind of forces them to have to mind what they're doing because they're marketing themselves as a brand. So I see a lot of benefits with it. And plus, like, these guys at B Sports are like my literally two of my best friends. One I grew up with since I was five, and the other one my best friend in coaching. So, like, I feel very comfortable, and I don't do anything. You know, so, like, I just send them to those guys, and they work the deals or the, you know, maybe a player has an uncle that runs a, uh, you know, like Coca-Cola distributor or something, and he wants to advertise with his nephew. They can do that. Like, we had a, a restaurant feed our offensive line, you know, and it's, it's, it's good marketing for the restaurant. Our O-line loved it, you know. It's team building, so I see a lot of benefits with it. It's just, it's scary to, yeah. you know. I know if I'm on Twitter, I can only like certain things, and I can't comment, and I'm like, I'm so nervous about, you know, because it's like an uncharted area, Well, you know. But it's important. I, I would tell it's my important. son, you know, when he's going through the recruiting process all the time, you know, he might do something where, you know, he likes something like, hey, I don't like that one you like. Take it down. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But the word you used before is being intentional, and it does force these guys to be intentional about what they're doing, to think about what they're doing, which I think is an, an important skill to have in today's world where, right. you know, we're just full of distractions, right? No doubt. And when you represent more than yourself, you know, it also, you know, you, it, you yeah. can remind them of that. Like, you look, you're representing me, my family, the, you know, the other players here and their family. So, and I think our players, I get this a lot, they love being part of something bigger than themselves, which yes. it, it's pretty mature for an 18 to 22 year old to say something like that. But I think we all, you know, all people want to be part of something. Right. And so I, I think that that with the, you know, with the social media part is huge, you know, because you see a lot of mistakes in social media and recruiting, you know, that's right. the first thing I do. Right. Just check out a guy's Twitter and what's he saying on there. Yeah, well, it, and I think you're the first coach I've ever heard talk about it as something educational. Right. And, and I've never thought of it, about it that way on, on the kids who have to deal with this because you have to support them for them to, to learn from this. But to approach it as something that's educational that, yeah, get a little bit of money for those guys now who are the maybe right. smaller school athletes, but really learn more about the stuff that's going to help you make the money in the future. Ball exactly. ends for everybody, right? So yeah. how are you going to make money when ball ends? And that's what we, you know, that's our our end goal is just making them, helping them be better adults, better leaders, you know, in the future. And, you know, when I, when kind of Craig at B Sports approached me with it, I'm like, I think that's something that's a tool we can utilize. And they're not going to remember how much money they got NIL, but they are probably going to remember an O-line dinner, you yes, know, that, yeah. that, and because I'm sure someone will ask them, you, you were around when NILs first started and yeah, I got to go out to eat and, you know, <laughs> got a bucket of wings and, you know, had a great time. So cool stuff. it's good memories and, yeah. and that's what that college experience is all about, learning how to be an adult. And yeah. that's part of the adult world now. Absolutely. So we got to teach them. Yeah. Well, hey, it was great to, to catch up with you here. Yeah. At AFCA, certainly would love to get you back on the podcast and love what you're doing there. So best of luck to you guys in 2023. Yeah, anytime, Keith. Seriously, have, I, I love listening to the podcast. So anytime you need me, hit me up. Thank you again for listening to the Coach and Coordinator podcast. Check out what Catapult Sports has to offer and what Coach Pennington talked about here. It's a great solution for your recruiting needs. You can find that at catapultsports.com. There's a link in the show notes as well. Follow all we're doing at coachandcoordinator.com and follow me on Twitter at Coach K. Kowalski.